All the works here are fully immersive and experiential. They are environments that you can completely walk through and experience in your own way. My name is Chantelle Rodriguez and I'm the Director of Experiential Art Centers for Super Blue. Our founders are executives of Pace Gallery and over the past 10 years they were working more and more with artists that were prioritizing these large scale shared experiences that reach a, a broad audience over the object based practice. Um, so they realized that there had to be a whole new commercial engine developed for these artists um, and Super Blue came from that. We don't compete with museums or gallery, we're just kind of a new part of this ecosystem that is able to support artists by presenting their works in large, flexible spaces like this one, and also shares revenue with these artists. With every ticket sold to the EACs or experiential art centers, there is a revenue split with the artists, all different agreements. Basically, it's so that they can kind of continue this practice and, and build on these shared experiences. There's a couple things that set uh, these experiential art centers apart from, you know, museums, galleries, or other traditional art world venues. The revenue share, that's definitely one. Two is, is we're standing in it. There are large, flexible spaces. The Miami Experiential Art Center is 50,000 square feet with 26-foot ceiling heights. We really want to give these artists spaces where they can break boundaries never seen before. We don't want to confine them to a specific gallery space or box. So the scale is, is the other. And the third um, is our team. We're not your usual you know, museum teams of curators um, and research assistants. We have AV integrators on our team. We have um, you know, our marketing teams, our experts in time ticketing and audience engagement and reaching a broad audience. Um, so with those three things, I think you know, that's kind of sets the experiential art centers apart. The viewer is really key. We, we like to say that the art doesn't truly exist or isn't completed without the viewer. So the artist sets the stage, kind of creates the environment, but it really takes visitor interaction to complete the work and um, make it a dynamic experience. And so the, depending on how everyone in the room is participating and interacting with these works, it's always a new experience and you could see something new every time you come to visit. As guests enter our experiential art center, they're welcomed by the first installation, which is by Drift, hanging above my head. Um, and that's Meadows. It's an upside down landscape in perpetual bloom. They will begin their journey in Team Lab, which is a collective of over 400 artists, robotic experts, botanists, based out of Asia. Within the Team Lab room, we have a couple projection works, um, but they're not your typical projections. Um, they actually react to your engagement or your interaction with them. Everybody around touches the piece, and there's actually a computer generating new code in real time, so you're always seeing something new. And following that, they would head to James Terrell. We have one of his Gansfelds. James is a pioneer of experiential art. He started in the 60s and 70s in the light and space movement, and most of these artists were heavily influenced by his work, and that kind of defined this new movement. Gansfeld is the German word for complete field. So the light and, and the colors in the room change, and as they transition, you get this feeling of a whiteout effect, um, this loss of depth perception, um, and it's this really out of body feeling. And then the third is by Ez Devlin. She's a renowned stage designer, now very well known in this field, and we have a, a multi story mirror maze by Ez Devlin. With our first exhibition, our intention was to really lay the platform and show maybe the general audience what is experiential art. We're reaching people who maybe don't typically go to museums, and if they came for a selfie or for their Instagram post, they probably walked out with some new knowledge of the art world and maybe were opening access to the art world.